Hey friends, hey welcome back again to another story time. Today's story is called Daniel and the Scary Sleepover and it's from the Bible in Daniel chapter 6. And it goes like this. Things were not looking good for God's people. They had been captured and taken far from home and now they were slaves of the king of Babylon. But God had not left his people. He was with them and he was looking after them. Daniel loved God and obeyed him. Now God made Daniel able to understand lots of difficult things. So it wasn't long before the king of Babylon noticed him. King Darius liked how clever Daniel was. So he made Daniel his most important helper of all and put him in charge of lots of other helpers. But the other helpers didn't like this. They wanted the king to like them best. They wanted to get rid of Daniel. So they spied on Daniel. They tried to find things wrong with Daniel. Things they could tell the king. Things they could, but there weren't any. None. They couldn't find anything at all. There was nothing wrong with Daniel. Except there was just the one thing. Every day, three times a day, without fail, no matter what, Daniel went to his room, closed the door, and prayed. There's King Darius, and he likes Daniel, and there's Daniel being faithful to God, and he is praying every single day. Whoa, what's going to happen next? Well, those men who are trying to find things wrong with Daniel, they smile to themselves. Let's get the king to make a law. No one is allowed to pray to anyone except the king. Daniel won't obey this law, and he will be punished. They were pleased themselves for being so clever and hurried off to tell the king. The king liked their idea. He didn't know they were tricking him. So he made it into a law. Everyone must pray only to me. If you don't, the lions will have you for their dinner. Daniel heard this. He knew it was wrong to pray to anyone except God. And he had to do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant that he would die. So... Daniel went to his room, closed the door, and prayed. And there's the men. They're making some schemes up. But the story's not over yet. Let's see what happens. Whoa. That's just what the bad man knew that Daniel would do. They skipped straight off to tell the king, Oh, your most glittering highness, your law says, Does it not that everyone must pray to you alone, sire? Why, yes, says the king. Oh, magisterial brightness, then correct us if we're wrong, but it would seem that Daniel is praying to God and not to you. The king was sad. He knew he'd been tricked. He didn't want to hurt Daniel, but he couldn't change his law. So he let the soldiers throw Daniel to the lions. May your God, who you love so much, rescue you, the king said. I don't know. Look at Daniel. He's being thrown down to these hungry lions. What is going to happen? The king went back to his palace, but he didn't sleep that night. Not a wink. He tossed and turned until finally, at the first glimmer of dawn, he leapt out of bed and ran straight to the den. Daniel, he cried, has your God rescued you? Why, yes, Daniel shouted. God sent an angel to close the lion's mouths. And there, resting his head on Daniel's lap, was the biggest lion purring like a little kitten. The king brought Daniel out of the den. Look, he said, Daniel doesn't even have a scratch. The king made a new law. Daniel's God is the true God, the God who rescues. Pray to him instead. God would keep on rescuing his people. And the time is coming when God would send another brave hero like Daniel who would love God and do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant he would die. And together, they would pull off the greatest rescue the world has ever known. Whoa, look at that. Daniel's there, and he's just resting with the lions, and the king, he's concerned, but Daniel's okay because God protected him. And the next part of the story, well, you'll have to wait until tomorrow for that one. So we'll see you then. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.